Hi, I'm Jessica with Splunk Education. In this video, we'll discuss Splunk's HTTP Event Collector, or HEC. HEC allows a client to send event data directly to Splunk Enterprise or Splunk Cloud for indexing via HTTP or HTTPS. It's a lightweight method that works well for mobile apps, IoT devices, or applications where a forwarder can't be installed. In this video, we'll set up HEC on a Splunk instance, create an authentication token, and use it to send events to the Splunk instance for indexing. For this video, we'll use an example of a fitness tracker called Pony Run. Its purpose is to detect when our users are active, so we may reward them with points. We'll use the HTTP event collector to receive events from these devices for indexing. Please note that setting up HTTP event collector will require a Splunk administrator role. We can set up HTTP event collector using the command line, but in this demonstration, we'll use the Splunk web interface. We go to the settings menu and click data inputs. Under local inputs, we click HTTP event collector. To allow clients to send events, HEC uses token-based authentication. Tokens allow clients without Splunk access to send data for indexing, making them a great solution when working with third-party developers. Events sent without a token will be rejected. Before using HEC, we must enable token use on the instance, so we click on Global Settings. We enable all tokens, allowing clients to authenticate with HEC. We can set a default source type and index for all our tokens. If events are sent without a specified source type or index in the token settings or event, HEC will use these. HEC can forward event data to more than one indexer, if they're defined in an output group. If we were in a distributed environment with a deployment server, we'd include it here. We are going to skip SSL encryption for this demo, but we strongly recommend using SSL in production. HEC's default port number is 8088 but an administrator can customize it if needed. Our global settings look good, so we click Save. Now we'll create an authentication token for the Pony Run wristband. From the HEC management page, click New Token. We name our token and have options to override the source name and give our token a description. We can select an output group if needed. Indexer acknowledgement allows us to know if an event has been indexed. We'll talk more about this later in the video. We click Next. We set additional input parameters in input settings. This includes source type, app context, and the index for our incoming data. We review our settings. Everything looks good. So we click Submit. Now our token is ready. Let's look at how our client software will use it to send data to HEC via HTTP. The Pony Run wristband's embedded software sends a HTTP POST request to the collector endpoint on our indexer, using the port number defined in the global settings. It includes the authentication token and JSON formatted event details. For this demonstration, we will use a REST client to test our event posts, but we could use CURL, a preferred programming language, or one of the Splunk logging libraries available at dev.splunk.com. We place the token value in the authentication header. The body of the message is our event data in the form of key value pairs. We send our post request and receive a JSON response which tells us the event was received successfully. Back in Splunk Enterprise, we can see that the event has been indexed. Looking at the field sidebar, we see Splunk has extracted our key value pairs at search time. When we send an event, HEC will respond to the client letting it know if the event was successfully sent. But how does the client know the event actually made it through the indexing pipeline? What if event data is lost due to system failure or outage before it gets indexed? That's where indexer acknowledgement can help. 
HEC can be configured to return an acknowledgement ID that is used to query the status of an event. To keep clients from impeding each other, a channel is used. Let's see an example. Clicking on the token's Edit button, we select to activate Indexer Acknowledgement. Back in our REST tool, we add a header item designating a channel identifier. The channel ID's format needs to be a unique GUID number. We send a POST request again and receive our response. Success means the event was successfully sent, while ACK ID is an acknowledgement ID number for the event. An ACK ID number is returned for each event that is sent. By referring to the event's channel ID number and ACK ID, we can use another POST request to confirm that an event has been ingested into our index. We do this using the endpoint we use to send data, with an ACK suffix. In the body of the event, we include a JSON formatted key value pair, where the only key is X, and the value is an array of ACK ID numbers we want to check. The request returns a JSON statement. It defines each ACK ID as true or false to show whether the event was ingested into Splunk. It's best to query an ACK ID during the time frame in which we could reasonably expect the event to complete the indexing pipeline. If we do not receive acknowledgement that the event was indexed, we can send again. Now that we've configured HTTP Event Collector and are receiving events, the software on the Pony wristbands can be updated to supply events to our index. For more information on HTTP Event Collector, check out the documentation link in the description below. While you're at it, view some of the other videos on our channel and sign up for education courses at Splunk.com. If you have suggestions for other Splunk topics, please email howtovideos at Splunk.com. Thanks for watching and happy Splunking!